I invite you now to please stand and open your hymnals, the blue book, to hymn number 718, God of our fathers and our mothers. Service continues on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer or in your bulletin with the opening acclamation. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Together, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord, amen.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, who calls all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to be seated, and if there are any children, I invite you to please come forward. Lee, you stay where you are. <laughs> um, I was going to talk about Jesus' scripture, no greater love hath someone than to lay down their life for another. Not many of us probably have had to do that in, in a literal sense of, of dying, although I know every parent has done that for their child. But those among us who have served in the military know what it's like to be willing to. I, I would enlighten at, invite anybody who's a veteran to please stand. Just, just look around and see the people that have been willing to lay their lives down for others and that they represent ones who have laid down their lives. So I want to applaud you all for being symbols of that and a symbol of what Jesus has asked us to do every day of our lives. Uh, as you prepare to hear the scriptures, this is my favorite uh, collect that Cramer wrote. Uh, Bless the Lord who calls all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant us so to hear them, read them, mark them, learn them, and inwardly digest them. You know, I was since I didn't have to preach this morning, I was watching a TV preacher. And he's again, he's just talking about the Bible, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible, as if the Bible were God. The Bible is not God. The Bible is not even big W, word of God, even though that's what we say every Sunday. The problem with Scripture sometimes is when Jesus walked in front of the people of the day, they were looking at their Bible and not God. This leads us to God. This is a sacred, living scripture, and it feeds my soul to read it, and especially when I'm able to inwardly digest it. Don't get me wrong, it is super part of our tradition and our faith. But as uh, Richard Hooker said, for Anglicans, as we look at how to live our lives, we look at Scripture, we look at tradition the way we've always done it, and we use our minds. And all of those together in dialogue with each other, it's a moving life we live in. And I think, I believe, that like the ever-expanding universe, we are learning more and more from Scripture so many, in so many different ways than we were taught when we were children or our great-grandparents were taught. In the South, they were taught that this Bible supported keeping people as slaves. People used this book to keep women down. People have used this book to be anti-Jewish which is crazy because we are born out of Judaism. This book is not to be used. This book is to wash over us. And this book should be using us, but not unless God is speaking and God is calling us. We have to rely on God in one another. I, I love what someone said about our baptism last week. This talked about this sense of community. It takes all of us praying, reading Scripture, interpreting Scripture together 
taking seriously what's gone before, but hearing for new insights from the Holy Spirit. What's the point of having God if you're just going to look at the Bible and not ask for God to speak to you? Now, I'm not preaching this morning. <laughs> but let's listen. Let's listen to the Scripture and mark it, learn it, inwardly digest it. It was actually one of your better sermons. <laughs> the first lesson today is a reading from the prophet Isaiah, found on page 682 in your pew Bible. And if you would please respond on the bold printed verses. For I am about to create new heavens and a new earth, the former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant who lives but a few days or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. Or one, one who, who dies at a hundred, hundred years, years will be, will be considered, considered a youth. And, and one, one who falls short of a hundred, of a hundred years will be, will be considered, considered accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards, vineyards and eat their fruit. fruit. They, they shall, shall not build and another, another inhabit. They, they shall, shall not plant and another, and another eat. eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity, for they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, but the serpent, its food shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response this morning is also in Isaiah 12, 2 through 6, found in your pew Bible on 628. Please respond on the half verse. And then at the end, uh, you'll notice that there's a blank space towards the very end of the reading. Uh, let's join together in the very last verse. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense. And he will be my savior. Therefore, you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs, from the springs of, salvation. of salvation. And on that day, you shall say, give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. And this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Sion, ring out your joy. For the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory, Glory to the, the Father, and to the Son, and, and to, to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and, and will, will be, be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. my name and say I am he and the time is near do not go after them in one of my reflections it was talking about a, a group who decided that Lord was coming and they sold all their houses and dressed in white robes and waited with nothing else to do just like these idlers that uh, John's about to read about get it straight 
left behind people, rapture people. Jesus said, in essence, live every day with your candles lit, ready to respond to God at any minute. But don't live, don't think you're the final generation. What's that all about? What, what's that all about? I have no idea. Have I said enough, John? <laughs> the epistle today is from Paul's second letter to the Thessalonians. Now we command you, beloved, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, to keep away from believers who are living in idleness and not according to the tradition that they received from us. For you yourselves know how you might ought to imitate us. We were not idle when we were with you, and we did not eat anyone's bread without paying for it. But we toiled with and labored. We worked at night and day so we might not burden any of you. This was not because we did not have that right, but in order to give you an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we gave you this command. Anyone unwilling to work should not eat. For we hear that same of you who living in idleness, mere bit busybodies, not doing any work. Now such persons with we command and exhort in the name of Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. Brothers and sisters, do, Do not, not be weary, weary in doing, doing what, what is, is right. right. The word of the Lord. The gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. When some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, Jesus said, As for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left on another, all will be thrown down. They asked him, Teacher, when will this be? And what will be the sign that is about to take place? And he said, Beware that you are not led astray. For many will come in my name and say, I am he. And the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified. For these things must take place first, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and in various places, famines and plagues. And there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They'll hand you over to synagogues and prisons. And you'll be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they'll put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. The Gospel of the Lord.
It's an honor for me on this Veterans Day service to be able to deliver the sermon, which will be based on the gospel. I'm glad Jim didn't go much further or there wouldn't be any reason for me to be up here. <laughs> Please be seated. Yesterday, I had the distinct honor of being the chaplain for the American Legion at the dedication of a brand new memorial, um, which has been placed in Casper, uh, a memorial that is a value for the entire state of Wyoming. It's a memorial that the Casper Legion has been working on for two years, and finally it came to fruition. It is located at the near the intersection of uh, Wyoming Boulevard and 13th Street, um, right across from the entrance to Fort Casper. If you get a chance to go see it, it's almost completed. Just the, uh, some of the finishing touches have to be put on it, which will be completed in the next couple of weeks. Um, it has panels listing the names of every fallen soldier, uh, every fallen veteran uh, in the history of Wyoming. Um, it listed by the different wars that, and the campaigns that they were involved in. Uh, and it's, it's quite, a, quite a, a wonderful memorial, and I invite you to drive down there and take a look at it. Um, it's, it's a wonderful thing. When I'm asked to, uh, to write a sermon, I usually try to... Uh, write my own words and come up with everything uh, of my own instead of just reading another sermon. Um, when I was first asked to start doing this with John Smiley, uh, he said, no, don't just get up there and read these wonderful things that have been written and recorded, um, but uh, paraphrase them if you would like. And so that's what I was doing especially when putting this uh, particular sermon together, I found one that was appropriate that discussed the gospel of today and one that was appropriate uh, for a Veterans Day presentation or sermon because of the fact that it was actually written uh, by a uh, chaplain for the U.S. Naval Academy and delivered there uh, in November of 2013 on this very uh, day of the church year. Uh, Margaret Seymour was her name, and it was a very, very long sermon, so I certainly wasn't going to read that. Uh, but I took some excerpts from it and have paraphrased it so that I'm not quoting her directly, but using her thoughts, which were well expressed. Thought that was appropriate source for a sermon on a Veterans Day service. In today's gospel passage, Jesus is in the temple in Jerusalem, and some of the people that were with him were admiring the beauty of the temple. To most Jews, it was a place made to last forever and was the soul, the heart of Jewish faith, much like the Vatican is to the Roman Catholics today. So you can imagine that they thought that Jesus was possibly crazy or at least guilty of blasphemy when he suggested that all of this would someday be destroyed. Turns out the Romans did attack the city and the Holy of Holies, a place so sacred that only the high priest could enter it, was ransacked and the sacred vessels were carried off as spoils of war. To many Jews, it must have seemed like the end of the world. But in our reading, the focus of Christ's words is to teach us the best use of the time until his actual return. His words don't speak to our comfort, but rather to our hope. Jesus speaks to the warning sign of things to come. First, he warns us to be watchful that we are not deceived. The key, of course, to recognizing what is false is to know the truth. Scripture is truth, so we need to read it, hear it, study it, ask questions, 
and seek to understand what we read. Satan sets the trap to try to deceive us just as he did with Adam and Eve and then again with Jesus in the wilderness. Satan disputed God's word in the garden while speaking to Eve. Have we heard persons today that are disputing God's word? Does it give us doubt? Satan then denied God's word, telling Eve, you will not surely die. The road from doubt to denial is actually very short. We need to know the right place to turn for our answers. Satan then displaced God's word in speaking to Eve when he basically told her to do what she thought was good rather than worrying about what God thought. In the reading this morning, Jesus warned his disciples not to fear or be terrified. If we believe God is in control, we can be confident and our foundation is strong. If you build your house on sand, you can never have peace in a storm. Jesus wants his disciples to live in the hope of the resurrection with a sense of security and stability that comes from a faith that is grounded and true. This doesn't mean that we are oblivious or indifferent to what is happening around us in our world. It's hard to be oblivious to what's happening around us in our world with social media and the press, everything that's on television. We are constantly reminded of what is happening in our world. We certainly feel the pain of loss, the anger against the attackers, the fear of the tragedy. But we have to take refuge knowing that God is in control. Jesus foretold of these things to come in our reading this morning so that we should not slip into the world of fear, but build our foundation of living on him because he is our solid rock. He told us not to be distracted by the happenings of the world like wars, sorrows, and persecutions, but rather to look on these things as opportunities for testimony. We know that if the world was comfortable and everyone felt there was no need of God, sharing the hope of Christ would be more difficult than it already is. When prosperity abounds and everything is going right, People forget God. When people have no fears, they don't fear God. When people are too comfortable, God is often irrelevant. When all of these trials come, people will ask, why? When people around us and even we as Christians ask, why? We may certainly not have the answer, but does that mean we fail in our building of hope in ourselves and those around us? Even scripture doesn't always answer the why question with the specifics. We seem to ask for other specifics, those that remind us that we live in a world filled with sin and human beings. And human beings are controlled by a sinful nature. That's as close as probably we're going to get to the answer as to why does the evil about us occur. But maybe as Christians, we can answer the question of what? What can we bring to bring hope in the midst of all of the turmoil Christ spoke of in this gospel? If we can be sure that we live in that hope, then maybe we can bring others into that same hope that lives only in Christ Jesus. So what is the message that Christ wanted those in the temple that day and those of us hearing his words this day to take into our hearts and our souls? Most definitely it is, don't be deceived, don't be afraid, don't be distracted but rather 
Cling with all your strength to the hope of the resurrection, because then, and only then, can we live within the peace that passes all understanding. Amen. I now invite you to please stand and open the Red Book of Common Prayer to page 358 or look in your bulletin for the Nicene Creed. Let us say it together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people are form three. You can find them on page 387 of the Book of Common Prayer if you're at home watching this on Zoom or Facebook Live, or you may find them in the bulletin. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us, your, give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our, our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that, that they, they may, may be, be delivered, delivered from, from their, their distress. distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we, may also, we also come, come to, share to share in your, in your heavenly, heavenly kingdom. kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Praying especially for Soren, Jane, Jim. Safe travel for Brian and a good interview. For Carol, Dan. Pray for our veterans. Jamie, Kathy. G20 Summit. For all of those in the Holy Land. Lord, we lift up our prayers to you, spoken and unspoken, from our hearts, our souls, and minds, and know that you hear us. We offer them to you in Christ's name. Amen. 
I invite you to make your confession, reading the prayer of confession on page 360 of the Book of Common Prayer, page 360. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. I invite you to please stand as you're able and greet one another in the name of the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. I invite you, please, be seated for announcements. Good morning. Birthdays or anniversaries to please come forward, and Brian, will you also come forward? Good morning. I'm representing your fellowship committee, and Thanksgiving is coming, and we don't have an awful lot of sign-ups yet. So... Uh, be sure if you're planning to come to Thanksgiving dinner here at St. Mark's to sign up so we know how many people are going to be here. And the neat thing about Thanksgiving dinner at St. Mark's is you only have to do one dish. One dish. It could be a can of olives even, I guess. So if you're planning on Thanksgiving dinner here at St. Mark's, Sign up, please. Beverly, Beverly, can you play a middle C, please? Can everybody match that on three? One, two, three. Do. Okay, you all passed. Uh, choir practice is on Thursday at <laughs> six o'clock. Be here. Thank you. Good morning, I'm Pat Hernicek, and I'm actually chair of the Stewardship Committee. To kind of remind you that this is our pledge season, it's an opportunity to share. Um, I, our theme this year was more than enough, and the scripture was about the loaves and the fishes. Um, and you know, I guess I, th I think about the little miracles that we see. Maybe we don't always recognize them as miracles, but um, I had an opportunity to serve at, in Katrina, after Katrina, the Hurricane Katrina, and every day there was a miracle. Just like an example, someone came in no medication because their home was destroyed. And that day, somebody would have sent, um, <clears throat> excuse me, gift cards for the pharmacy at Walmart. Anyway, every day, every day there was a miracle. But you know, we have miracles here, and 
it's uh, through the blessing and generosity of people in this church. We give 11% of every penny that comes into this church out to our community to serve. And that doesn't include the extra things that come in for the diaper ministry or all the energy that you do in serving throughout the community. Um, and we create little miracles every day. Um, so I guess what I'm asking is that you pray about what you can share because most of us have more than enough to create miracles for people. I guess that's it. I can't say anymore. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Uh, forgot to turn in our pledge card, so if you've forgotten, <laughs> you still have time. Hi, I'm Jim, and I forgot to turn in my pledge card as well. Uh, as someone said to me who was from the Southern Baptist tradition at lunch, he took me to lunch and said, I got three questions. Um, how do you join the church? Because nobody ever asked him. Good Episcopal church. How do you give? Because if you miss the one sermon on stewardship, and in this case we got two, uh, he didn't know how to give, and then he said, where's the front door? Well, we now know where the front door is. You know how to pledge. And Pentecost is the time. If you haven't joined the church, please remember to come and join as many of you got my email yesterday, uh, I was tested positive for COVID, and uh, the health department said quarantine for five days, which I did, and then wear a face mask for five days. So I've asked the fellowship committee if we could change the potluck on Wednesday, because I have to wear my mask and I can't eat with a mask on. So I've changed it to December 7th when, um, some other people like Cammy can participate, and my wife will be here. So I, I hope you'll bring something for a potluck on Wednesday, December 7th at 6 o'clock. Um, I want to thank Steve for preaching today. Uh, I wasn't sure what kind of energy I, I would have. And, and Gary George, I'm sorry to say, I'm back. I got all the energy in the world. Um, and I want to thank Temple for being willing to celebrate communion, as my wife said, you know, they really aren't going to want to see you up there touching that bread and wine after having COVID. So Temple is going to celebrate and then race back over to St. Stephen's. I really appreciate that. Youth today is at 1215. We're going to meet here and go over to St. Stephen's at your labyrinth, Temple. I hope that's okay. She's not paying me any attention. Um, and I'm going to talk about uh, the Holy Land with them. Um, our class on Tuesday is 10 o'clock on all the baptismal vows, what it means in, in the first baptismal vow to continue, continue in the apostles' teaching, fellowship, breaking of the bread and the prayers is all about stewardship and participating in the life of the local congregation. Next Sunday is Christ the King Sunday. Uh, Sandy, where are you? It's your birthday, girl. Where is she? Come down here for your birthday. Where's Sandy? Uh, Sandy is co-chair of our altar guild, and I'm so glad she was born because she was born with the gift of patience. She's dealt with me for six and a half years, five years, yeah, forever. Seems like 30, and I'm thankful for your birth. I think everybody's birthday here. And uh, we're going to do birthdays and anniversaries, and I've asked Brian Higgins, who is chaplain of the Department of Wyoming, American Legion to lead us in a prayer for veterans. Have I gotten everything? Yeah, and I just came down for birthday. Oh, you go ahead and do it. That's no, great. No, I just want to... Do you have a birthday? No. Okay, but you go touch them and bless them because I'm not going to. <laughs> so page 830 in the Book of Common Prayer. By the way, Facebook Live, uh, text your prayer requests and I will get them said. Let it... Children, O Lord, as their days increase, bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may thy peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
No, he's here to say a prayer for veterans, and, and Brian, I invite you to step up here and uh, or actually step up to the lectern, please, and read that prayer. Happy Veterans Day to my brothers and sisters. I also like to thank Steve as one of my local chaplains for all the good work that he does here in town. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are grateful for our veterans and their dedication to our great nation and their sacrifices. We thank you for watching over their families when our veterans are away. We pray you will provide healing power, grace, and strength to our veterans with visible scars and those who carry their scars inside unseen by others. We pray for the day when we will no longer have any wars or conflicts, a day we are all united in your son's name. Amen. Now scribe unto the Lord the honor due his name, bring offerings and come into his courts.
Thank you for your patience. I would like to first say how I usually start my communion is that this is certainly not my table. Most certainly it's not St. Mark's table. This is God's table and to God's table, all are welcome. So today we are doing Eucharistic Prayer C. I believe it was in your bulletin or found in your book, A Common Prayer, beginning on page 369. I like this one, it's a lot of participation, so. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and had their being. And from the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law and to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By our wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets and apostles and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with their your glory in their unending hymns. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, high. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, 
God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. Want to hold this up, Lori? Okay. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart with thanks and with praise and thanksgiving. Amen. Thank you, Nancy.
Attention. If you all will please join me in the post-communion prayer uh, found in your bulletin or on page 365 of the Book of Common Prayer. And do please stand as you are willing and able. Together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jim, you want to? The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. I invite you to please be seated for the recessional medley until you hear the national anthem.
And now let us go forth in the name of Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.
It brought tears to my eyes. She's on. She's, she's muted. Yes, she's muted. Hi, Margie. If they cut Hi, off, ben. if they cut off the meeting, we'll just restart. Okay. <laughs> 